Dear China, please make another DT80. This is a mini DC power supply, which is very compact. It is a useful tool. Now, one of the main reasons is because all the other DC power supply cable kits are like this. It comes with a million cables all attached to each other and you cannot use this. If I'm gonna use an iPhone 6 board, I need to have all these other cables in the way. I have this really long cable that has to go to a DC power supply. Uh, there's no display on here and pretty much every other squid cable is like this. For a DT880, let me show you exactly how it works. So this plugs into a power source. So this is an extension cable to a charging brick, just regular five volt charging brick. And then on this side, you only have one cable. Check this out. It is literally just a micro USB cable that is about one foot long. And then here at the end, it's just micro USB. And then all you really have to worry about is these little plugs here. This is one plug for each model. You just swap it out. So I'm gonna use an iPhone 6. For example, here's one. I just plug it in. And there you go, I'm, I'm using an iPhone 6. When I use a different model, uh, we can then just swap out just the very end. You don't have to deal with this. If I want to use iPhone 6, right, I have to plug this in to my DC power supply, which is on my shelf up there. So now I have this long cable that just hanging. And then, all right, let's find the iPhone 6 plug. Now, I'm not just talking about this mechanic one. There's a million other of these boot cables, just like this. It's literally multiple cables, multiple plugs. If anything, the manufacturer can save money by doing it this way. One cable, multiple plugs versus a million cables and a million plugs. So basically I would have to find the iPhone 6 cable in here and it's just a disaster. Like my desk is already cluttered enough. I don't need more cables for a necessary reason. You're literally duplicating the same cable multiple times when you can spend a little bit of uh, R&D to figure out how to create a plug that is universal that you can easily swap out. So I need a 6S Plus, I plug this one in. I need a iPhone 7, technically 7 Plus, and there you go. Now, the way this DT880 works is it gets power from the left side, or you could also even plug in a micro USB cable in here to power it. Then here is very simple interface. We have volts and amps. And then below we have the max current in, in the session and then time spent in that session, which I never really use this. You push power, we now have essentially 4.2 volts coming from the charging brick through the cable to the plug. And then you can push prompt to boot to boot the device. Very simple use case. This is, not, this is something you can train your employees who do not do any board level work to use. And then you can have them record what happens before prompt to boot, what happens after prompt to boot. So when you give it to the solder technician, they already have that information up front and they know exactly what to do from there. So in this example, let me show you an iPhone 6 that has a short before prompt to boot. So I'm gonna turn this off. So we have no power here. I'm gonna plug it in. Now, this is one downside of the DT80, which a lot of people complain about, but there's no need to. So this one has a short before prompt to boot. So when I push power, the screen goes black. But if you look closely, you can actually see, it actually restarts if it stays off for too long. I'm gonna turn it on, turn it off. You can see it was 2.2 amps for a brief second. But basically, if you get a black screen, that basically means it is a full short on the board and that's why the screen goes black. So if there was an improvement to be made on the DT-880 is to not allow the screen to go black or at least limit it to two amps or three amps so it doesn't uh, black out or whatever you need to do for that. Another thing I would recommend is remove one of the USB ports. There's two, I don't know why. I guess so you can have two of these plugged in at the same time, which you should never be using two phones at the same time from this because this only outputs one voltage. If you have two phones plugged in, it kind of, it's probably gonna have problems. I never tried it, but that's my uh, recommendation. One other thing about this is the voltage is fixed at 4.2. That means your employee cannot mess this up. Whereas the DC power supply is variable. So someone can mess with it and put it at 12 volts or 20 volts. And then you don't realize that you plug in a phone to your squid. You plug in your phone to one of these and there's no regulator on here. At least I think some might have a regulator where it will bring it down, but you can fry a board if you have the wrong voltage. If you have an employee, a non-solder tech using this, there's zero chance of them damaging a board with it. Now, one downside is some people actually will 
do this. They'll get the DT80, think it's a USB meter, and then they'll plug this in, and then plug in a phone to this, which is not the use case. This is not a USB charger. Do not charge your phone with this. So that is for a different use. This is for DC power. This is to plug in to the battery connector so you can do diagnostics like this one. We have a short before prompt to boot. So there's a short somewhere on this motherboard, which I need to track down and fix. So let's do that right now. All right, so here's how I'm gonna use the DT80 to solve this short. So I'm going to push power and you can see there's a something heating up there and you get, it corresponds with the screen going black. So turn it on, this lights up goes off so let me clear that short and then come back the shorter cap has been removed and now let's check again for the dt daily behavior and look at that no more sh short before prompt to boot no heat around the capacitor so now i can prompt to boot and look at that prompt to boot behavior now looks normal so this is how we're using the dt80 to solve this so let me actually reassemble this phone all right, so one of the great things about this is now I could use the DT80 and a screen only to boot a device. Now this is just for testing, quick testing. I didn't never use this for long, like boot, like fully boot the device and fully test it. This is just to make sure we even get Apple logo and possibly to the home screen. Because once we get the Apple logo and it looks like it's booting, then I just put that into a known good housing to uh, do the rest of the testing. So. Another improvement I would recommend is the labels here. So it says power and it says test. I think test is a wrong word to use here. It should probably be boot. So like, you know, prompt to boot, so it should be boot. So power and boot. So power feeds the power from the power source through the cable to the board. And then test or boot will prompt to boot the device. So you can see the prompt to boot behavior. This is what we always want to study when trying to solve a no power case. We wanna check that consumption to see if it's normal sequence. And so far, this one's showing normal sequence and we get an Apple logo. So all things that look promising that the phone's gonna boot and you're gonna see it'll go up one amp and then eventually might even go 1.5 amps if not two, depending on model. And then it eventually will slow down and drop. Then we got the home screen. Give it a second, the screen goes to sleep. You can see the current draw also drops because there's no current required to light up the screen. If I need to light up the screen, I can use that. I use the home button. You can see the current corresponds to the screen because it needs that juice, which is being pulled from here, etc. So uh, those are the main things I use this for, for no power scenarios. Also for battery drain scenarios where phone is draining battery, you can use this to see do you see any abnormal current draw before prompt to boot? That will tell you there's a leak. There's something pulling power when it shouldn't. Um, actually, look at that. This is another thing that happens every once in a while where a working board uh, will show random current draw like in the one single digit milliamp, but that's fine. Uh, I usually, like I said, I don't use this for full testing, just enough to get to the home screen and see if it works. And then I'll pop it into the housing and finish my testing or data recovery from there. So let me show you examples of every other power supply cable. As you can see here, this one also comes multi-cable, um, this one multi-plug, like all these come with multiple plugs on the same cable and it's just very, very clutter. Like it'll clutter your bench and I really hate that. So you can see how like, if I need to just use one of these, I ha I'm stuck with the, all the other cables right next to the one I'm working on and it makes, it makes it very frustrating to use. There's literally no other DC power supply uh, boot device like the DT80 and even like some of the newer ones, like I saw this one is a new uh, boot cable, but same thing. It it's, has the plugs for every model, including 13, but if you look, through the pictures, you'll eventually find, here you go, one uh, USB plug, but then it comes out to four cables. Now you have the clutter again. There's literally no way to get rid of the clutter. Uh, in the past, when I had an old cable, I just cut off the excess that I didn't need. For example, I needed one with just uh, iPhone 4 uh, 
plug because I didn't have it on anywhere else and the rest I already had on the DT80 so I just cut it off. So lastly, the only other improvement would be to just add support for all the newer models. So this ended with iPhone XS, which looks like this. And actually it was iPhone X, XS, XS Max, and there is no uh, XR or XR. So um, my friend Ben actually made this adapter for the cable because the actual plug here broke and you can get replacements. Uh, you can get the Kionly ones and solder them and make them work here, but I don't think they even make those anymore. So, you know, whoever has to make this, whether it's Canly, Mechanic, uh, Action, you know, Wiley, whoever, if you guys can make something very similar to this, I think I would buy it, I would test it, and if it's good, I'm gonna promote it like crazy on my channel. So, hope you guys listen to my suggestion. Please make a single cable, multiple, just, these things, you, all you need to worry about is one little tiny box with all the little plugs. That would make my life so much easier and a lot of text. Now, there, I know there's some people who are adamant on using a DC power supply and not this, but I don't care. I use it. I've, this, has, this is great also for content creation because you can easily show it here on the camera. I don't have to put a separate camera for my DC power supply. Also, when I'm doing my live trainings for my students, it's really easy to show like, look, this is what you should see when you prompt the boots. You can see the boot up behavior. It's a great tool. So hope you guys are listening or watching this video and take my advice. And if you want to partner up to make this tool, also reach out to me. My website is down below. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.